axial spondyloarthritis is a is an umbrella term which includes non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. There is a lot of confusion about this term, mainly because we always learned about ankylosing spondylitis in the medical school and during the residency, and that has been recognized for the long time, mainly because in ankylosing spondylitis there are X-ray changes of sacroiliitis and also changes on the spine of the patient that you can see on X-rays. In non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, which is the earlier stage in patients with ankylosing spondylitis, there are no diagnosable X-ray changes. And so for the longest time, we couldn't recognize these patients. Still more recently, when we had MRI uh, diagnosis or MRI available to us to use for diagnostic purposes. So axial spondyloarthritis is an umbrella term non-radiographic axial spa and ankylosing spondylitis are two aspects of it. It's like, to give you an example, rheumatoid arthritis, it could be erosive and it could be non-erosive. So earlier stages is non-erosive, later stages it can become erosive. So these are not two different diseases. It's the same disease spectrum. Some patients have non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis and then some of them will actually develop ankylosing spondylitis over the years but every ankylosing spondylitis patient at some stage in their career were non-radiographic, their disease career, so to say. The X-ray changes in of ankylosing spondylitis, which are definitive radiographic sacroiliitis on sacroiliac joint X-ray, that takes anywhere between six years to 10 years for diagnosis, which has been one of the problems in the diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis because unless there are X-ray changes which are definitive, patients will be missed. So first six to 10 years, the patient may be completely missed as having a disease which is immunologically mediated, which can be treated aggressively. This patient will be just counted as another back pain patient. And back pain is so common in the general population that this person with back pain because of axial spondyloarthritis could be just lost to the follow-up or get inappropriate treatment, which is another reason why the, there's a delay in diagnosis of uh, patients with axial spondyloarthritis, the lack of radiographic changes in the early stages of the disease. When I'm describing the axial spondyloarthritis uh, to my general practice uh, friends, uh, I tell them that uh, consider axial spondyloarthritis like a river and initially the river is sort of flowing and it just say mechanical back pain type of situation. It could be inflammatory back pain in most of the patients. Some patients in fact might just have mechanical back pain. That is very common. Some of these patients are going to develop axial spondyloarthritis and they would generally have inflammatory back pain which is characterized by pain that is worse with rest pain that is better with activity, which is opposite to mechanical back pain, where the pain is better with rest and worse with activity. If, if you ask a patient with axial spondyloarthritis, typical patient, what would you do if your back hurts? Would you get up and move around or would you lie in bed? They will tell you that I will get up and move around, which is very different than the common mechanical back pain. So in this big river of back pain, you need to find the patients who have inflammatory back pain some of them going forward are going to develop ankylosing spondylitis, but some of them might just remain non-radiographic, axial spondyloarthritis. And that's where the crux is. How do you find these patients with non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis in this big river who have just back pain? It's so common, back pain in general population. And the answer to that, and this is what I teach primary care physicians and uh, family practice doctors and even rheumatologists, is it generally comes with other spondyloarthritis features. So they may have inflammation in their eye called uh, iritis or uveitis. They may have skin problems such as psoriasis. They may have inflammatory bowel disease. They may have peripheral arthritis, inflammatory arthritis. And all these kind of things then make you think, hmm, this back pain is different. This person is telling me, and then you ask them that back pain is better with exercise, with activity, worse with rest, and they have other features of spondyloarthritis. This might be a patient with axial spondyloarthritis, whether they have or don't have X-ray changes of sacroiliitis. And that should increase your interest and your suspicion in this particular patient. 
So there are ways and means of diagnosing these patients early as long as you keep your antennas up that this common mechanical back pain river, there may be some patients hidden who actually have inflammatory back pain and who might have axial spondyloarthritis.